So this is an update video. If you haven't seen my first video about the Velocity Logbook, which is linked below in the description, you might want to check that out first. If you're familiar with the Velocity Logbook that's for free on the VBT Coach website, then this is the update with the latest features that I've added to the page. So first of all, in the individual, individual logbook, we have some updates. First of all, we've got way more columns now. So we've got weight, reps, best rep, velocity loss, RPE, they're all the same. But what you'll notice is we've now got a blue cell that's highlighted with yellow, bold, underlined and font. That is now a new PR. So anytime you set a PR, a personal record or a PB, if you work with personal bests instead, then that is going to highlight in blue and the font is going to turn to gold. So that happens for best rep, so a new best rep velocity for your back squat 40 kilos and also load PR. So if you use an equal or a new velocity or load PR for that exercise, it'll highlight blue. I really like that new feature. Next, if we come across into the performance context area, we've got three uh, context rows or columns. We've got a seven day, a 30 day and a 90 day average for that exercise load combination. So you'll see here, there's now three cells that highlight up in green. Now for me personally, I'm only using the 30 day average in my own training, but you might want to play around and experiment with using a 30 and a 90 day or a 30 and a seven day or just a seven day or just a 90 day. So you can easily hide these. So if you just right click up on the top of the column and you select hide column, the 90 day disappears. It's still there. It's still calculating. You just click these little arrows here and it expands back out. So we'll hide those back off. And there's already some hidden row, uh, columns in there that are actually doing the maths for us. So we don't need those. So they remain hidden. And you can use as many or as few of that 7, 30 or 9 day average as you like. The next column is the velocity PR. That's what we use to calculate and make those cells go blue with the gold font back over the other side. So I always hide that. And same for the load PR. Those two, they exist. They're there. They're calculating. But they need to be hidden because the blue cells are doing the work for us there. I've also still got my estimated RPE, the beta system going on there. That's just using a velocity loss calculation. So if you have more than 35% velocity loss, it's a 9.5 or a 10 RPE. It's not a perfect system because uh, percentage fatigue and percentage velocity loss is highly dependent on the rep range. So 40% velocity loss for a 10 rep set is very different to 40% velocity loss for a four rep set. And so the RPEs aren't always going to match. This RPE system I think works best in sort of a four to seven rep range. It's going to be a bit average outside that and it's not really going to be very relevant below. I'm still exploring the idea of using a last rep velocity number instead of velocity loss. So you do best rep and last rep for each set and you log those. I think that might give us a better RPE estimate, but then it needs to be connected to your minimum velocity threshold, which is a whole thing. Uh, I'll link to some stuff from Lendon Hickmont. He's done some cool work in that last rep velocity space. It's something I'm still exploring. So stay tuned, probably a new video on that coming up soon. Then of course, you've got your notes uh, column. That's the same as before and room here for extra metrics maybe you want to do rom maybe power whatever the case may be you can do those over in the extra extra metrics column now one thing i get asked a bit about the velocity logbook for the individual logbook in particular is with this section the velocity and rpe numbers does it have to be velocity does it have to be best rep does it have to be peak velocity mean velocity whatever it is the truth is it actually doesn't matter it's really up to you so you could actually use best rep velocity and actually just do best rep power that is totally fine. And you could even do best rep power for one exercise and best rep velocity for a different exercise. It's up to you. It's really, this is just some simple calculations and automations within Google Sheets and you can use it however you want. So for example, if my back squat here, I want to track with velocity, I could maybe then do uh, my trap bar deadlifts and I could do that for power. So 500 watts. It won't affect the numbers in the back squat, won't like it give you weird average or anything like that. You just have to remember that when you're doing deadlifts, you're tracking power and when you're doing back squats, you're doing velocity. So just if you want to do that, that's fine. Just remember what metric you're using on one exercise. So there are the updates on the individual logbook. Individual progress sheet is basically the same as well, just a little bit of a format change, but the same rules apply. Pick your exercise, pick your load and up come the numbers and the dates. Now, the big change I've made to this logbook is I've added a Teams spreadsheet. This is what I think is really cool. So first, you've got an athletes page. This is where you add all your athletes. And I've got room, I think, for maybe, yeah, 100 athletes to be added to your sheet. I've picked a few superstars from uh, different sports across the world, and they then come up in here. And we've got an extra column. So all the same changes I made in the individual logbook have been duplicated into the Teams logbook. The one difference is now column B has you select your athlete 
from that list before you then go into adding the exercise, the weight, reps, and the data for their velocity-based training. So same rules. We've got a 7, 30-day, 90-day average. We've got velocity PRs, load PRs, RPE estimates, velocity loss, best rep. All that stuff is the same. It's now just linked both to the exercise and weight combination for a given individual. So you might have two, maybe 10, maybe 100 athletes using the same spreadsheet, logging their data, and it'll only bring up their PRs and their 7, 30, and 90-day average. So when Tom's in the gym, for example, he goes through his workout. If these cells go green and he gets his 30-day average appropriately, then his numbers, he knows, can be quite confident that they are, in fact, what they need to be. So if we add some data, we can see that he's slightly above his 7-day, 30-day average for that exercise. Pretty simple stuff. That's the change, though. And so you can now just add your exercises, add your athletes, rather, via the drop-down. Just make sure you add them to the athlete list first, and they'll then show up in those drop-downs. And then for the athlete progress on an individual basis, it's the same things. You just select your athlete, select the exercise and the load, and you can chart out their progress from there. So there are the updates. The profiling stuff is the same. So how to create your 1RM estimates, your L0, V0, curve score, um, manually finding power on the power curve, that can all be done the same. Entering athlete details for relative numbers too. And then you can still chart those as before uh, by exercise and by by score using and then by date and that charts them out and shows you a nice little trend in your progress on that exercise. So that's it for today. Just a quick update on the logbook. Some people getting confused about the changes because what they were seeing in the video wasn't matching what they were getting when they downloaded it. I've now updated that. So make sure you watch this video as well for the updates. Obviously you already have uh, and enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions about how to use the logbook, any ideas to make it better. I'm always interested in those uh, and enjoy. Happy lifting. Happy lifting.